What up, what up? Wait a second. I'm not supposed to say that. Okay. Uh, anyway, my friend Jonathan Winbush just came out with a tutorial on how to import animated splines from Cinema 4D into Unreal Engine. And it's a bit of a hidden workflow, but he figured it out. And he's kindly letting me post part of this tutorial, which shows how to import our magical 3D power stream elements into Unreal Engine. So huge thanks to Winbush for letting me share. I'm going to put a link to his full tutorial in the description. But without further ado, here is Winbush. What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I wanna to show you how you can take your splines and bring them into Unreal Engine. Now, the magic to making all this happen is of course Cinema 4D. Sorry, Blender folks. <laughs> but for real, without further ado, let's jump right into it. So recently, our friends at the Pixel Lab just released a pack that this is perfect for. It's like this VFX electric magical pack. And the nice thing about it, it does come with the splines. So if you bought this pack and you want to get the splines to work inside of Unreal Engine, just doing it the way that I showed you is going to work. But let me walk you through step by step on how I can set this up to make it work with that VFX pack. So we're back in Cinema 4D because this is where we're going to set everything up. So inside of my Windows Explorer right now, I have the Olympic file, which is going to be all the curves from the Magic Pack. This is the Stream version 1. I'm going to left click and just drag this into Cinema 4D. And then I'm going to click on OK. So now if I play this through, you see we have like this electrified magic circle. And this is going to be the direct splines that we need that we can pull this into Unreal Engine. So I'm just going to stop this, go back to the beginning. And I'm going to go through this fairly fast because it's the same exact steps that we did before. So I'm going to come over here to where we have our splines. And I'm just going to make a circle. And then in the top up here where we have MoGraph, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to add a Mo spline. And when I do that, it looks really big. And that's because these actually come in very, very small. So if I scroll out here a little bit more to where we're at like a decent size, and then we're just gonna come down here and take this Olympic pack that we got there from the Pixel Labs. I'm just gonna bring this up to like 100 by 100, somewhere around there. Now we're at a more manageable size. So what I'm gonna do now is under most spline, I'm gonna come over here again under object. I'm gonna click on spline. Then I'm gonna take the curves that we got from the Pixel Labs. I'm gonna left click and drag them under the source spline right here. And now the last step from here is we're just gonna put a sweep in here. So I'm gonna click right here, come over here. I'm just gonna add a sweep. And I'm gonna take the circle. I'm gonna make it a child of the sweep. Same thing with the most spline. I'm gonna make it a child as well. And this order of operation is really important. So you do wanna have your circle at the top and then most spline at the bottom. And if we push in here, we can see it's extremely thick. So again, with most spline selected, I'm gonna come down here. I'm gonna select the spline actually. And where it says width, Let's just make this 0.3. So now this is going to make it a little bit more slim, and it's as easy as that. So the next step from here, we're just going to export it out again as an Alembic file. So make sure you select the sweep, the circle, and the most spline here. Come over here to the top left where we have file. Come down here to export, and I'm just going to click on this gearbox again. And I just want to make sure everything is as I need it. So I want to have selection only. That's the only thing we need to worry about. And then our end frames here, it's only going to be about for this one, it's going to be about 150 frames. So I'm going to type in 150 and then I'm going to click on OK. And then from here, we're just going to save it out as an Olympic file. So I'm just going to shorten this. And I'm just going to leave it at curves.avc and I'm going to hit save. And while this is saving out, I'm going to go back into Unreal Engine. So inside of Unreal, I'm just going to take the last level we built. I'm going to right click. And I'm just going to duplicate it. I'm going to double click, hit save selected. And then I'm just going to take this electric Olympic file that we have here and I'm going to delete it. Same thing with the sequencer. I'm going to delete that as well. And the reason I did that is because I don't want to set this post process volume up again. So I'm just going to use what we had before. So now we do have the curves Olympic file set up here and you can see it's coming in at about 10.5 gigs. So this is a big boy there. So you definitely probably want to just use this for cinematics. You don't want to use this for gameplay. I would say it's pretty heavy. But if I click and drag it into my content browser, now we're going to come up with this scene again. Import type, we definitely want to do geometry cache. Make sure this one end frame is 150 and everything else should be good to go. I'm just going to click on import and let this import away. All right, so now we have our Olympic file in here. We just called it curves. What I'm going to do now is come up here. I'm going to make another level sequence. Just name this one version two. Okay, so now we have our new sequencer. I'm just going to take this curves Olympic file drag it into my viewport. I'm going to zero everything out. And then from there, I'm just going to take this globe material we made before. I'm just going to put this into all of our material slots like so. There we go. So if I double click on my curves, it should bring us into the middle of our scene here. 
And now let's get this animated. So I'm just going to come over here to Sequencer, drop my Limbic file in here. Again, come down here, Geometry Cache like so. Now if I click on Play, now we can see we have our electric field playing real time inside our Unreal Engine. So this was the easiest way that I figured we could do it. So you do need Cinema 4D to be able to import it, but it's fairly simple once you figured it out. So once again, my name is Jonathan Winbush. Make sure you leave me a comment down below. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you in the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.